Hi everybody, this is a quick video to show you how to take through Design Space this new SVG to cut an eight sided explosion box. So, this is uh, a box to hold a wax melt burner and eight cellophane wrapped snap bars in the walls around the sides. Nothing new here really, it's exactly the same idea and method as the six sided one so if you've made that before you're going to find this really easy but um, they are very easy boxes to make so. First thing you need to do when you bring any SVG with multiple parts and score lines into design space is you need to convert those lines that come in as cuts which actually need to be scores and in my SVGs they always live in this first group in your layers panel. If an SVG, a cut file SVG for a 3D object has been saved properly it should come into design space in three groups and the groups are, you can see it's a group because it's got this little downward pointing arrow at the side of it so there should be a group which contains all the cut pieces, a group which contains all the lines that need converting to scores and the SVG overall will be in another group. So you do need to convert and ungroup and if you do it in the order I'm going to show you everything will stay where it should be and it'll be super easy to work with. So as I was saying we need to convert the score lines and in my SVGs they always live in this first group. So you just click on the name of that first group which is your second line down in the layers panel. You find your operations menu wherever it is on the version of design space that you're using and you choose score from the drop down menu and you can see that those lines have been converted now and while they're still selected you need to ungroup them so again on the desktop version ungroup is at the top of your layers panel it'll be elsewhere if you're on the mobile app the second step is to select the colour cut pieces so again you're just going to click on the name of the group that they're in you can see it's a group by this little downward pointing arrow and all we need to do here is ungroup and the last step is to click on that final group which contains absolutely everything on screen or you can just drag a box to enclose it or you can use this um, select all button however you want to do it once everything's selected do that third and final ungroup so now everything's a separate piece and we can attach the score lines to the individual pieces that they need to be attached to. And I think the quickest way to do that is to click on screen somewhere near the piece, drag a box to just enclose that single piece and its score lines and find attach in the version that you're using. In the desktop version it's at the bottom of the layers panel attach those together so now when you move it everything moves together until you attach it if you try and move it you'll see that the scores will move on their own and you don't want that so we'll put those back again click on canvas somewhere near it drag a box to enclose it and attach and you need to do that for every piece in the SVG that's got score lines okay so these are the bases. You get one for the outside of the box and one for the inside just to make it stronger. Uh, you'll understand that when you read the PDF of instructions that comes with your download. This is the lid. So we need one lid and two bases and these are the walls. And the reason I don't give you um, six of each is that you'd have to do all that converting and attaching every time for six pieces. It's much quicker to just convert them and then duplicate. So you can either click on the duplicate button up here or you can do control D on your uh, keyboard if that's where you are, anywhere you want to do it. So you've got one, you need two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an eight sided box. I'm just going to move the lid out of the way. We'll pop that over there. So those are the snap bar boxes that stick to these, which are the... Um, side walls i'll just move those because duplicate's going to happen there so again we've got one we need two three four five six seven eight design space never does the same thing twice does it okay we'll stick those over there right so those are all the parts of your box so now we'll click make it and see what happens um every piece apart from the lid i'll just go back yeah, that's just fractionally too big to cut from A4, unfortunately. So you'd need a sheet of 12 by 12 or A3 for that. But otherwise, every single piece of this box will cut from A3 or letter. 
or 12 by 12 so um i actually cut mine all from 12 by 12 so if you do that you need uh one two three four five sheets and again you're going to choose i think i had to do something special here let's just see what happens when we choose 12 by 12 yeah i don't know why it does this so um again with this one let's just go back to the outer walls for a second this only works this layout only works if the pattern of your paper can work any way around otherwise it doesn't quite work and you'd have to do something different so we'll actually talk about that first i'll just go back to the canvas so if the paper you're working with you want the pattern to be all the same way around on your walls if it's noticeably only one way uh, you will get let's have a look yes you'll get three along the width of a 12 by 12 so i would just for neatness's sake align those and attach them and then i'm going to duplicate that because we know we need six i'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see what i'm doing and then we only need two more And again, I would align those top. Yeah, and attach those. Mm. This is what I did for mine because I cut it from 12 by 12. And it does mean, no, you still need the same amount, actually. It's okay. Yeah, so first page, choose 12 by 12. You've got the lid on one. And now with these walls, you can you still need three, so it's fine. It doesn't actually use any more. And what we just did there, attaching three together and then attaching two together, means they're all the same way around on your paper. So if your pattern must go one way or the other, you need to do that. These are the lids. It's really weird that it splits these onto two, but it's just the boundaries thing in um, Design Space, isn't it? So I'm going to click on the three dots on one of them and move. And then I'm going to move it onto here. And then as you can see, it really easily fits on a sheet of 12 by 12. So they will all go on one sheet. And now when we come to these, these are the inside boxes. I'm going to choose 12 by 12. And it says they won't fit on, but they will. So this, um, this one here, you're just going to rotate it and put it there. And then you're going to find one from another mat. Again, you're going to click move. You're going to go to this mat here, which is where we've got them the right way around. And you're going to pop that there. So four fit all the same way around on a 12 by 12. And again, with this one, just turn it round. It's a really strange thing that it does that. Um, and then go back to this one and click move. Put it on this mat that fits. Oops, where's it gone? Where is it? This puts it there. So there you've got two sheets of 12 by 12 for the snap bar boxes. So it's going to get rid of that one. We'll just press continue. Yep, so now you can see you actually need seven sheets of 12 by 12 to make this. What would happen if we choose A3? Whoops, what have I done there? Oh, sorry, go back. Yes, I do. Just went a bit too far there. So I'll choose A3 now. And for this one too, it won't make any difference though, will it? No. I mean, I will choose A3 just to show you, but it will still need two sheets. Yeah, it's done that really strange splitting round thing again. Uh, so even if you're using A3 for those, I would use the um, 12 by 12 layout. So yeah, let's have a look there on A3. So yeah, if you're using A3, um, let's have a think. Yes, it's not going to get any better. That's still the case. So you'd need five A3s in that case. That's it. I hope that helps. If you've got any questions about anything that I've talked about here when you come to make yours, don't hesitate to get in touch. The links to contact me on Etsy or Facebook are in the description below. And if you've just stumbled across this video and you'd like to buy the SVG, the link to do that is also in the description. Thanks a lot. Bye.